Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the HR Leaders Podcast, a show where we explore the future of work with industry experts and HR executives from the world's leading global brands. Today, we're joined by my friend Dave Auric, who is a speaker, author, professor, thought partner on HR leadership and organization. I know many of you already know Dave. This is his third time on the show. Welcome back, Dave. Thanks for joining us. Chris, what a privilege to be with you. Um, you always are clever and creative and dealing with uh, the next generation issues. Thank you. Well, thank you. Well, I've, I've basically based that off, off the back of your work, Dave. So <laughs> I have you to thank for, for, for that as well. And uh, one thing that we always talk about and I love is how you're always disrupting Dave Warwick <laughs> and yeah. just disrupting yourself. And you've can continued to be able to do that for many, many years. So it's been amazing. But okay. first and foremost, how are you? You know, forget about everything else. How are you? How, how and, is that? And uh, I, we are doing well. I mean, this crisis is a crisis for everybody. I call it home detention. Other people call it, uh, oh, what's the word? Secondment, something settling in your home. We're home. Uh, welcome to my home office. Um, and we're doing well physically, emotionally, socially. But it is tough. We don't have young kids, Chris. I don't know how you're managing that with Natasha and Robin uh, yeah. in your life. Uh, but we have grandkids and, and we have friends. But we're doing extremely, extremely well. I do freak out. Last week, I'll confess, on Wednesday, I was up early working, and I'm working harder almost than I've ever worked. And about 7 a.m., we had an earthquake of 5.7. Really? And I thought, I thought, okay, enough. Did you really? We did. Oh and our God. house shook, and my wife came out, and, and I looked at each other and said, okay, this is now a day off. Because <laughs> in addition to the pandemic and the crisis and all the emotional worry, our house might fall down. <laughs> but we didn't, and we're absolutely fine. So we are doing great. Wow, wasn't expecting. And what about that. you, Chris? It's been tough, obviously, as you know. My wife, we have a small um, apartment that we live in, and it's been quite tough to be in a small space with li the little one running around. Obviously, my wife and I is on the phone to clients, customers. I'm in another room on the phone or at a podcast, and then the little one running around the house screaming. You know, uh, it's it's been a, that's been the biggest adjustment for us. Because obviously, Robin's normally at nursery, but they're all closed now, of course. But to be honest, I've just been fascinated at how quickly we all adapt. I was so worried about it. And I told you in the, the week before I was getting a lot of anxiety. I had my anxiety came back in a way I've never had it before. And I was really struggling to keep it together, you know, with, with how our business has been disrupted, you know, obviously looking at the news every day is never healthy as well for your mind. And it's just a lot. It was kind of overwhelming. Um, but I found over the last week or so, I've been able to adapt by putting systems in place and structure but now I'm starting to feel like I'm getting into a, 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 a bit of a rhythm and a groove, to be honest. But you are right. I have never worked as hard now than I ever have before. But look, I'm not complaining. Everyone's in the same position. I, I know there's other people out there in a lot worse situations for me. And, and that's why I'm trying to stay positive as well and, and, and make sure that I look at you know, what I do have in life and what, rather than what I don't. And so I can control the controllables. There's no point in me getting stressed out and upset about things that I cannot control. And that's really what I've been trying to shift my mind around right now as well. So, Well, we all handle this kind of crisis in our own way. Yeah. Um, and there are some dysfunctional things, but hopefully we all find ways in this crisis to do self, self triage and self monitoring <laughs> so, that, yeah. so that we make it work. So I'm very impressed with what you're doing, one of but it is a tough time. Yeah. One of my biggest concerns, Dave, I said to you before the show is that how, especially the HR profession are not taking care of themselves. Uh, at yeah. the moment, I spoke to many of our clients and customers, and obviously they're worried about their employees, but you need to worry, they need to worry about themselves. So that's really why I'm trying to send a message to the HR audience out there that have, they've, this is unprecedented. They've never been in this position before. There's so much uncertainty amongst your organization and their people. But you know, one thing I want to get out on this show and this conversation with you is if you're a HR leader listening to this, you need to take care of yourself first. I've done coaching for a number of years. I end 95% of my coaching sessions with the question, how are you doing with yourself? How are you taking care of yourself? Because any leader, HR business has to worry with multiple stakeholders. They have boards of directors, customers, investors, their team, their employees, et cetera. But the most critical of all of those stakeholder lines is oneself. And I think sometimes leaders, as all of us, get, get so preoccupied by the urgent, as Steve Covey once said, that we forget the important. And, and so for HR people, one, we have to take care of ourselves. However, that works. It could be exercise. It could be nutrition. Could be watching 
mindless television. It could be video games. There's a friend that we've had named Ivan who spends all of his time playing <laughs> silly video games as a way to distract himself from any pressure. But whatever that is, yeah, yeah, whatever we in HR doing. should legitimate it and we should model it, especially with our business leaders who are just going through so much demand. Yeah, What are you doing to take care of yourself as, as she or he is under such enormous stressure? So Boy, do yeah. I, I share that one. And, and it's not a new issue, but I think under this crisis, the pressure gets even more intense. But now, on the other hand, we don't want to be so preoccupied with ourselves that we forget the realities <laughs> of work. Of course. In fact, in, yeah. the, in the piece that you're going to post on HR in a crisis, I posted that a few days ago and I posted another one, Leadership in a Crisis. One of my takeaways that is really tricky, and I'm confessing, I don't have a recipe. I don't have a checklist. I don't have a a guaranteed answer, but it's navigating a paradox. Mm -hmm. On the one hand, we in HR, and I use the word in this article, caregivers, and I got literally blasted by some HR it's people. I am not a caregiver. I'm, I'm a bad. business I'm partner. Bad. And on the other hand, we do give care. I think we are the emotional first responders with our business leaders, obviously, and helping employees take accountability for themselves. But there is an element of emotional well-being, of social well-being, of caregiving, that's critical. Frankly, I'm proud to be a caregiver. I have a 92 year old mother and she's nervous in this crisis. Obviously I am her, I am one of many of her caregivers. HR, that doesn't take us backwards. That takes us forwards. We are caregivers to our people and we have to build a competitive organization. If my organization doesn't win in the marketplace, if Chris can't keep that organization going with the support of his people, I've said for the last couple of years, the best thing HR can give an employee when you're trying to give care is an organization that wins in the marketplace. If my organization doesn't win, there's no workplace. Yeah. And so navigating that incredible tension yeah. is so difficult. Mm -hmm. And when, and people say, well, you know, I want certainty. I think in this world, People say, well, when's this going to end? When's this going to end? When do our kids go to school? When can we go shopping? When can we go to restaurants? And the answer is, I don't know. I've had some of my financial advisors sending me uh, updates. Let us tell you what's going to happen in May. In fact, I wrote back to one yesterday and I said, <laughs> stop this. You yeah. don't have any clue what's going to happen in May. Yeah. Neither do I. Let me learn to live in that world of total uncertainty and then control what I can control. I can't control the world around me. I can control some of myself. I uh, Probably one of the great philosophers, depending on your faith, whoever lived uh, was Jesus Christ. And one of the lines he said was, I give you peace, not as the world giveth. The world isn't going to give a certainty. We've got to find the peace. And, and what that means is Chris and Natasha and Robin as a family unit, you will find your way to survive this. Myself, my wife, our children, our extended family, we will find our way. And that's by navigating this tension between caring for myself and my organization with managers, obviously, and then navigating and creating organizations that win. Boy, that's a tricky balance. And I think that's where HR can really be helpful. You gave an example. I've got some of my HR people who are, who are overdoing the organization. They're working 24 hours a day to do virtual work, to set up home offices, to keep people involved, to make tough decisions about layoffs and costs and culture. They're going too much on the organization. They need to rebalance a little bit with the self. We call it navigating paradox. You don't manage it. You don't fix it. Yeah, no such thing. <laughs> because you navigate it. And then in this world of uncertainty, something's going to come up. Last Wednesday, we had an earthquake. I had two or three things scheduled. I looked at my wife and I said, we can't leave the house. Well, we hope there's a house. But we're done. I'm done for a couple hours. I'm going to go yeah. watch a stupid television show. Mm -hmm. I'm going to call my kids and, and people that I love and care about because I needed to get away from the business side to a little bit more of the personal side. I'd love your comments on that. I, I hope we can help HR people be caregivers. I'm not ashamed of that. I'm proud of that. Mm -hmm. We are the emotional first responders with business leaders and with the employees themselves and be organizational architects who create organizations that win. And man, if we can do both of those, we build a long-term agenda out of this uh, current triage. Yeah. And to your point about uncertainty, I, I also realize it, it, it's shown vulnerabilities in our business. I think under these pressures, our true values begin to come out. 
Yeah. Uh, somebody told me once when I was learning French, you will probably swear in your native language if you hit your thumb or hit your finger with a hammer. And that's one of the things I think HR can be aware of is mm -hmm. that as we're facing stress for ourselves or for our business leaders or for the employees, what are the truest values that are coming out? And, you know, here's the good news I'm seeing. There are heroes everywhere. And my experience right now is among the HR community, there's an abundance of goodwill. I see people saying, how can I help? How can I do webinars for free? I mean, I'm not yep. billing probably for the next six weeks. I'm mm -hmm. doing two or three webinars a day. And, and, and we're social citizens. We're in this trying to help each other. Our neighbors are coming together. Uh, we won't go into each other's houses, but we decided uh, for the neighbors in our community on Sunday, we needed to kind of change the mood. So we went out and bought uh, paper bags, little paper bags. And in America right now, the symbol of this crisis is toilet paper. Uh, toilet paper is gone know, it's everywhere. Crazy. It's, it's gone amazing. everywhere. So we put a roll of toilet paper in every paper bag, put a little note on it and said, you know, we're thinking of you and this is the most personal and precious gift we can give you. So we knocked on the door, they opened the door, we said, stay away, here's our gift to you. And they'd open it. it. You gave me a roll of toilet paper. You know, we did 16 rolls of toilet paper. My wife counted, we still have more than enough. But, you know, <laughs> it's, it's finding ways to not run away from the crisis. One of the lines I so love is we mourn with those who mourn. We, we empathize. We those that are socially distant or who may have lost loved ones, we mourn with those who mourn, but we also anticipate what's next. I can see, Chris, that you're trying to model that. And that's what leaders need to do in the crisis. Leaders need to become the role model of what we as a company want to be known for in the future as well. Have you noticed companies' values have shifted? It's interesting because most companies I know, and probably you'll know this better than me, have a set of espoused values. Uh, we value innovation. We value collaboration. We value integrity. They're there. I was in a company a week ago. It was the last uh, in-person session I did with about 15 business leaders. But I said to them, what do you as an executive team want to be known for in this moment of triage? This is a crisis by those who observe you, by those who work with you. And it was fascinating, caring, concerned, worried about people. I mean, great stuff. What then I did, and I think it's an interesting HR exercise, is I said, your unit has just spent six months creating a set of values that are on every wall. Those values are around three things for them, care, accountability, and results. When you just went through what you as an executive team want to be known for, 90% was in the care column. We need to live those values. What does accountability mean in this crisis? What do results mean in this crisis? And let's learn as an executive team that our espoused values, often created in offsites, really show up in the crisis. And that's where I think HR people can be the most helpful. One of the places where HR people can be the most helpful is holding a mirror up to our leaders and saying, are we living the values that are on that wall? For example, innovation. As we try to solve the, uh, the challenges of this new workforce and workplace, are we being innovative? Are we trying new ideas? Are we taking risk? Are we experimenting? Customer centricity. Are we doing things in the way we do work today that will create value for our customers? And trying to shape that in a, in a positive way. I completely, completely agree with you. But what I'm concerned about, though, Dave, is that, is that line where people, I think a lot of business owners I'm speaking to now, it's just like, how do we stay alive? Oh, can I, can I share with you a metaphor I haven't fully developed? By the way, that's the new world. I think the old world is get a metaphor, it's perfect, and then publish it. I think there's four phases of a crisis. And I'm thinking about a medical accident. My uh, son-in-law is a physician. If he's driving down the road and there's a car wreck, by obligation and by personal value, he has to jump out and do what I call triage. The person is injured. You don't think through values. You don't think through everything. You take that person, you staunch the bleeding, you get their head up, you get them. I think right now we are in triage. We are in triage with our employees, with our policies, with our customers. And that doesn't mean we're separating good and bad people. I'm using triage a bit differently. Mm -hmm. I think in a world of triage, you simply react. You don't stop. You don't plan. You don't call 10 people. I think right now your world, and I love what you've done, not everybody's going to do yours, that's fine, but you've had three meetings a week with your employees. That's triage. I think right now we're living in, 
business and personal triage. How do I deal with Robin who's bouncing around my house? It's triage. I don't know. I think HR's job in triage is to get stuff done and then to hold a mirror up. Did we live our values? Phase two, let's use my accident metaphor. And by the way, I may write this up soon. You've got it first. You put the individual in an ambulance. The ambulance is a kind of transition time where you calm down, you take diagnosis, you respond, you begin to build a bit of stability. I don't think most of us are yet from triage crisis to the ambulance mode. Phase three is you go to the hospital where you get serious and thoughtful service. You now have skilled physicians who, who give you the care and the, and the work that you do and you get, you rebuild your processes and phase four is you go home. And, and I think we adapt and we go home and we change our lifestyle over time. My sense is right now, at least myself and those I'm working with, we're still in that triage phase. By the way, we still got to react in triage. You got to survive. Yeah, I mean, exactly, when, yeah. when my brother-in-law sees that person on the ground in an accident who's bleeding or injured or broken bones, my, my brother-in-law, my son-in-law has got to care for him or her. I think we need now to begin to eke into a little bit the ambulance stage. Yeah. So how do we now begin to help HR look a little bit forward, get on a journey to prosperity? Ambulances don't fix problems, but they move us on a journey to what's next. And then we're going to get in the hospital phase where we begin to institutionalize processes and get the support. Anyway, that's my metaphor. We're in triage. We're reacting against values. We're going to move to ambulance. I hope sooner, not later. I have no idea when. Uh, that's the uncertainty. And then I think we're going to get into hospital where we do have processes and ways of working that, that help us succeed. And then hopefully we go back home with a new set of ideas and a new set of values and a new lifestyle. End of metaphor. Um, now, yeah. the other thing I would say, and, and, and I'm not going to let it go. We're going to echo it over and over again. We got to take care of ourselves and the people we care about. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I yeah. hope Natasha comes to you once in a while and says, Chris, stop. She just gives me, you know, sometimes I didn't even need for words. I think the other day when I was really anxious and I said, look, Tasha, I literally, I, I was just about to go live on LinkedIn and I had a panic attack and I said, I need to, I just need to leave the house. And she said, what's the matter? I said, can you just come, can you just walk with me? She just gave me a hug. And, and that, that was all I needed at that point was just a hug and a, and a, and a bit of fresh air. And I can came back and then you would never have known on that live stream on LinkedIn that I just had a panic attack <laughs> about you 10 know, minutes before, but I just needed some, let some me, time. Let me share the personal side I'm in. You and I have talked, I have weird sleep habits because I've traveled internationally my whole life. So I'm often awake from one to four in the last week, twice. And there's people that are within my circle of, of friends have sent me a note, Dave, are you awake? And I'm going to get emotional here. I am. Can I talk to you? One of my friends, Probably my closest friend was in the middle of a major decision. I won't say any more than that. And he was just stuck. He was in that emotional overwrought range. We spent 90 minutes on the phone. Calm down. Let's talk. I've had two of those midnight calls in the last week. Mm -hmm. And you know what? That's the caregiving that I sure hope we're doing. Yeah. By the way, I've now called, I'll be honest, my son. And I've said, Mike, this earthquake, I'm freaked out. Dad, let's talk. I hope. You have a, a wife and I, uh, friends, and, and I hope we each have our circle of uh, caregivers to whom we can turn. And I hope in a business, our business leaders have us that they can turn to, to renew themselves so that they have the capacity to go forward. Mm -hmm. My other sense is when we go through these phases of triage ambulance hospital, and when we do return home, the best is yet ahead. That's my line for HR in the last six months. The best is always yet ahead. We will deliver talent. We will deliver leadership. We will deliver organizations as HR leaders that help us win in a new marketplace. And um, I am confident that we will find creative ways to do it. I wish I had a checklist of the six steps. I wish I had a recipe of how to make that happen. Yeah. Um, but I think even your conversation today, I feel like I learned far more from you than I shared with you. Because I think people like you who are facing that and you're running into the crisis, you're not afraid of it. There's an accident on the road. You're not closing your eyes and driving by. You're jumping into it without knowing exactly what triage means. What does the ambulance ride mean? What's, what's next? But we're doing it. And we're seeing some incredibly good HR movement in this space. Yeah. Um, well, thanks so much for that, Dave. And one thing I want to add to that is for my own team, one thing I've been really humbled by is, is how they've responded. You know, we're a small business and they're going above Ivan, Escher, Shane, James, everyone. 
are all going above and beyond to keep this business alive and to deliver value to our customers. Um, you know, one yeah, of the yeah. cool things I did last week in this team of 15, I said, are, do you have heroes who are standing out? And you just did what, what, and they all said, I do. And I said, each of you name one of those heroes. So that when you as a business leader, this was a very large 40,000 organization. When you go back to your office, tell the people your name was just shared in front of the executive cabinet, in mm-hmm. front of the team. I think those hero stories are something we celebrate. We're not just resilient to overcome the past. We celebrate that future. And there are heroes among us who are, who are giving us that guidance in that direction. You're one of those, Chris, you're, you're, your sensitivity, your passion, and and I hope uh, Natasha, your wife, is sensitive that what you are sacrificing uh, for your family and for yourself is creating value for an HR community. And hopefully, like a, a rock and a pebble, a rock and a uh, pool, the concentric circles of that influence will help not only the HR leaders but those people that they that they serve as well. So thank you for what you're doing. Appreciate it, Dave. And uh, thanks for taking the time out. And for all of you on LinkedIn for, for joining us, we appreciate it. Uh, from wherever you are, uh, no, leave, a, leave a comment below if you haven't already done. Let us know where you're tuning in from. We'd love to know where you guys are, how you're all doing. Any, you know, Myself and Dave will have a look at the comments as well. So any advice you guys can provide on what you're doing, what's working, we'd love to hear from you. We're, we're in this together. No one have, has a silver bullet right now. <laughs> as well with these unprecedented times and uh, any questions just uh, drop us a message but stay safe um, make time for yourself and and uh, we'll get through this all together so um, thanks again Dave I'll let you go and uh, I'll speak to you again soon okay thank you see ya bye